Hello, my name is Mark Biasotti. And thank you for your interest in this short video on boundary feature. In the next 12 minutes, I want to show you this feature in some of its many capabilities for creating complex surfaces. So here is our completed spoon. Let me turn on real view so you can see that a bit better. Notice the fluting at the end. It's amazing to me how simple objects like these, if you look at them closer, are rather complex exercises. But with the boundary surface, we're going to make this a rather easy thing to do. So let's roll forward to some initial sketches that were created. Here I have a 2D and a 3D sketch line. I'm going to create a, an additional 2D three-point arc so that we can create the boundary for our spoon portion. So by placing this three-point arc, I need to also create some sketch points and then make pierce relationships with my existing sketches. So by placing these two, I'm now going to create a pierce relationship with those existing sketches. And then with the 3D sketch. And then looking at the front view, let's make the center of the arc coincident with the right plane. And now we have a pretty well-constrained arc. I'm just going to drag these points out. doesn't matter where they are. And now we have what we need to create our first boundary surface feature. So let's invoke the boundary surface. And as always, I can just start picking curves. But in this case, I don't want to use this entire curve. So let's uh, deselect this. I'm going to use the Selection Manager and show you the power of the Selection Manager. Selection Manager, you can create a curve building up any series of curves, but then you can delimit them also, creating or, or helping to eliminate a lot of pre-work. Let's take the second curve and slide its endpoint and snap it to that sketch. And now you can see that I've created my first boundary surface with a delimited area of the original curves. Now I need to trim this, and so I have a sketch on my top plane that I'm going to use to just trim away the extraneous portion of this boundary. So I'm going to pick this inside area, and now I have a trimmed area that represents the spoon portion of the spoon. Let's roll forward and create the rear handle area. If we look at this end sketch of the handle area, I basically have three splines that have been constrained to construction geometry. And I've done this so that I can easily reshape this area by just dragging my construction geometry and resizing it. Construction geometry is very powerful for doing this in sketches. Let's create the outer boundary of this handle area using a 3D sketch spline. Now with 3D sketch blinds, I can start to move them around using my handles or my control polygon. In this case, I'm going to use my sketch triad to move it in specific directions in 3D space, making it a lot easier to reposition. I can also constrain it to existing external geometry like this construction line, make it parallel which is my design intent. And then let's pull on the weighting handle to move its influence out a bit. And then go to the end of the spline and let's make a C2 constraint with that existing boundary edge. And then pull the weighting out a little bit and get it the way I want it. That looks pretty good. Let's create one additional sketch, and I'm going to drag this reference plane back a bit to this area. And then on this plane, I'm going to create a three-point arc. And this three-point arc is will be an interim first directional curve to limit the fluting as it moves forward in the surface. 
So I just need to constrain or pierce with these existing sketches the endpoints of this arc, make that coincident with the right plane, and then pierce this with that 3D sketch spline. And now I have the ingredients to build my boundary surface. But at the end I have a complex sketch. I'm going to create some reference points on this edge and I'll show you in the boundary surface how I use those to control the surface. Let's go ahead and create our second boundary surface. And using my selection manager I'm going to create my first directional curve group. You can see I can pick elements here and then make a group out of them. Represents my first direction and then my first direction interim curve and then my third curve for the first direction. And then I'll pick my second directional curves. And now I've defined my boundary surface. But you can see that I need to control that fluting as it goes from the rear to the front. So what I'm going to do is add connectors to go through the surface. So here you can see if I can add connectors going from the front to the rear, I can actually use those connectors to control the shape of the surface. So I've added two connectors here. I'm going to snap them to vertices in the sketch and then go to the end where it connects to the spoon and those reference points I made, I'm going to snap those connectors to them. And now the, I have something very powerful here. I can use these connectors to control the overall shape of this fluted spoon area. So I'm going to drag these connectors and get it to the shape that I want. And you can see through the feedback I get a pretty in, good indication of of that shape that is really the design intent. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. So now all we need to do is knit these surfaces together, mirror them, and then make it solid. But before I do that, I see that here in my spoon area, I have a dip. So I'm going to split my screen and then use my dynamic modify to pull on that curve in the first boundary surface and correct this condition. So using my bottom screen portion, I'm going to edit that sketch and then by pulling on it, I'm going to observe in the upper viewport my result. So pulling on the weighting will affect the shape of that surface. And you can see here I've done a fairly good job of flattening it out. There's a little bit of waver here. And if I spend more time on it and add perhaps some more control to that curve, I can get it just right. I can also use my property manager and add very explicit values. And then put some curvature on it and observe if I'm getting a good rate of curvature. It looks like I am. So I could probably tweak on that a bit more, but for right now, that's pretty good. Let's go back to a single view and hide some sketches and then roll forward. my second boundary. So I need to knit these together. So I'll go to Insert Surface Knit. Pick the two surfaces, knit them together. And then take that knitted surface and mirror it across the right plane.
Now with my mirror and my original knit, I can knit both of those together. And now that I have a single surface body, I can use that to thicken. Let's change the value down to 025. Perhaps make it a little bit thicker. And complete my feature. And now I have my solid model that represents my spoon. Let's add some small radiuses to the edges. Let's hide this sketch first. And by picking these edges, you get my preview. Let's turn my preview off and then pick the other edges, both top and bottom. And then complete my radius feature. Let's add the, make a value that is perhaps a little bit smaller. And now I have my radiuses on the edge of the spoon. And I've created a, a simple sketch in the rear portion to trim off the back to make it rounded. So I'm simply just going to use this open profile to cut away the rear area of the end of the spoon and give it a rounded feel. And then my final feature is to add a radius to that surface or that face. So I'm going to pick the entire face and use a 15 thousandths radius. So that completes my exercise for this spoon. You can see how easy it is to use Boundary to make complex objects like this. Thank you for viewing this short demonstration. If you have any questions about Boundary or other SOLIDWORKS features, feel free to visit our website at www.solidworks.com or you can call a local reseller with the numbers that I provided for you on the screen. Thank you.